Hey guys, it's 681 Shadow. Welcome to my ReZero Arc 3 Interlude 3 Part 2 web novel reading. Now, for those of you who ha who um, are interested in reading this for yourself, and instead of waiting for my videos to come out to go even beyond, I will leave the link to the website where all of these translations are in the um, description down below. And also, if you are not caught up to this point in the web novels and you want to see my reactions for them, my playlist with my reactions will be in the description below as well. So without further ado, we will um, get into part two of Arc 3 Interlude 3. Here we go. By the time Subaru arrived in the capital, it was already over. His conversation with Amelia on the road were all gone from his mind. The girl sitting safely next to him, Subaru should feel content and relieved, having finally, finally saved her. But in this relentlessly galloping dragon carriage, the only thing on Subaru's mind was the other girl, who is Rem. Looking confused, she tilted her head as she said this. He scrambled for the, to look for the smallest hint of a joke, something in her voice, in her expression, hoping again, again, hoping against. Um, I mean, wait, I hoping or hopping? Uh, I'm. <laughs> why am I even doing that? Hoping, hoping against hope. The words "just kidding" would come out of her mouth, whether it's Petra or the other kid the other kids, no one remembered her. Having confirmed this fact with everyone in the carriage, Subaru commanded the driver to rush to the capital with all haste. On his face was the, was the desperate expression of someone riding into death itself. Impossible. There must be a mistake. It was all going so well. Everyone was saved. The objective was completed, despite enduring so much pain and sorrow. Taking so many scars within his heart that will never, ever heal, everything worked out in the end. And still... Ah! Aha, it's Super Yukun. Impressive. Krish sama, you managed to find that capric capricious little little stray. On the way to the lounge, seeing the two in the hallway, someone called out to them. Shaking around in a short dress, liberated liberated from the knight's garments, a pair of cat like ears twitched. Felis walked over to them and gently picked up Krish's hands. Felis san. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm just Felis. Felis and Krishnama have known each other for a very long time, Neon. If you still add a son to my name, I'm going to die of loneliness and despair, Neon. Holding up Krish's hand, hands in one hand, Felis used the other to nudge Krish in the shoulder. At such affectionate interaction, Krish looked like she wasn't sure what to do with herself, but essentially accepted it as it is. With a sorry, she lowered her head. To become just like before, even though it's not easy. I will try my best, Felis. Yes, just Felis. It's all right, Neon, because Felis is always Krishama's companion and will always stay by your side. And to be together with such a cute version of um, Krishama, Felis will find even more reasons to fall for Krishama, Neon. Just the thought of that makes Felis happy, Neon. <coughs> um, playfully swing, swinging Krish's captured hands up and down. Felis blew her a kiss. So apparently there's like a bit of romance going on be between these two, which is interesting because none of this really happened in the anime. And it just, and it's kind of, I mean, if I was in like Crucius's shoes, it'd be kind of odd because um, Felis looks like a guy, but I mean, looks like a girl, but is a guy, which is really odd. But anyways, watching them, the unease growing inside Subaru's heart became unbearable. Even though Krush had changed so drastically, Felis treated her the same as always, and accepted her as always. It was something beyond what Subaru could understand. Inside that, small inside that smile of Felis, how much inner struggle must be lying within, Subaru doesn't know, nonetheless. The thought of it alone filled him with sentiment. Subaru, Kuhn, get in the lounge, Neon. Emilia saw an old man Wilhelm are waiting for us. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. His thoughts must have added something into his voice, but Felis didn't seem to notice. Saying, This way, Krish Sama, Felis led her by the hand. In the subtle atmosphere between Subaru and Felis, Krish tried to hide the uncertainty looming between her brows. She looked at them, one and then the other, in the end not saying a thing, silently followed behind Felis's, footstep, Felis's steps. Taking a deep breath, Subaru bit his lips and closed his eyes. His mind was on edge, his heart felt desolate. In that say, he, he didn't want to see anyone at all, but it can't be helped. He will not make excuses to comfort himself, because that's the last thing he'd want to do, is to blame her for his pain. 
Um, this way, they made their long overdue entry into the lounge. Noticing all eyes were on him, Subaru looked around the room. Other than himself, there were four people present. Emilia, Wilhelm, and one step before him, Crucian Fellas. Seeing he must be the last one, Subaru closed the door behind him and ever so naturally sat down next to Emilia. Ever so naturally. <laughs> oh, that's, that, that, that's a good one. That's a good one. Subaru. No problem. I've calmed down now, Emilia Tan. I am all right. To Emilia's wor worried call, Subaru lightheartedly retorted. Only his eyes weren't looking at her. Rather, he couldn't see her at all. If he met Emilia's eyes now, he would have revealed it a despised part of himself. The very thought of, of it filled him with uncontrollable dread. Now that everyone's here, let's begin. With the sound of a clap, everyone's attention landed on Phyllis. It would be impossible for Krusha to direct a meeting in her condition, so th that task fell to Phyllis. Roughly surveying everyone present, Phyllis walked to the front of the room with an arm in the air. Since there are no objectives, Nyan, let's assess our situation. Thus, with a smile, a meeting in which everyone wanted something completely different began. Now, that's the end of that section. That's pretty interest. It's actually pretty interesting because they're having a meeting um, about their current situation. They say um, Krush can't lead the meeting during her due to her situation. So that means she's probably still recovering from the huge wound she got in um, Interlude Two. And and then so she has um so she has Phallus do it, leading everything, and everyone wants something entirely different in this meeting, which which is um, very interesting. We don't really know what everyone's going to want from the meeting, and that's going to be something that we'll have to see in part three. And also, I think I find it I find it really interesting that um, Subaru's Subaru's getting a lot of, a lot of this like mental pain because of like everything with REM and just everything in general. And and if he was to really look at Amelia, then that would just come out, and he doesn't want that to be an effect on um, what they need to do. So that is all for part um, two of inter of arc three, interlude three. Thank you all for watching. Remember to rate, comment, subscribe, and share this video. And let me know what you thought of this re of this um, part in the comment section below. I do um, enjoy reading those and um, talking to you guys about what we think about these um, about these web novels. So I will see you all next time.